builder through this land of ours who fill a sportsman's dreams. Enjoy what nature holds for us, her bounty never ends. Getting back to basics with the practical sportsman. It's always an adventure, no matter where we go. From a favorite hunting spot to the highest fishing hole. Outdoor life we all can share with family and friends. We'll do it all together with a practical sportsman. And we'll do it all together with a practical sportsman. Hello sportsmen. This Sunday, the 22nd of June, is Father's Day. You have any clues as to what to give your dad? I got an idea. Instead of getting him something, something concrete, you know, like some object, why don't you take him fishing? You could get a charter. Well, I did this this uh, past September. Took my dad out on a fishing trip. I hadn't been fishing with my dad in years. I also took the dean of Cooley Law School, two, two guys who were pretty important to me in the last few years, in fact, my whole life. Stay tuned, I'll show you a great Father's Day gift. Fred Tros Practical Sportsman is brought to you in part by Marbles of Gladstone, Michigan, a maker of high quality handcrafted sporting knives and sporting specialties that stand the test of time since 1898, and by the financial support of viewers like you. You've heard the slogan, take a boy fishing. Well, that's what I did at the end of August. In fact, I took two boys fishing. Not young boys, these were older boys. But neither had ever been on a boat like this in the Great Lakes. The best chance, too, is a $400,000 Tierra, a boat you usually see as a cabin cruiser. Best chance has it outfitted for fishing. Lots of space in the back, rod racks all over. This boat is big enough to take most any wind, waves, or weather that Lake Michigan dishes out. Now on this day, Lake Michigan was calm off Saugatuck. That's always a bonus when you want the people you're taking fishing to have a positive experience. Our crew included deckhand Bill Bale, my father, Norm Trost, Captain Dave Engel, and Dean Don LeDuc, the Dean of Cooley Law School, a man who had never been trolling on the Great Lakes. I promised if he got me through law school, I'd take him fishing. Dave Engel took the boat out to 140 feet of water. The El Nino effect of this summer has kept the water unusually warm and the fish unusually deep. Now the Dean taught me administrative law. This was my chance to teach the Dean about salmon fishing. Both Don LaDuke and my dad had never used some of this space-age fishing tackle at best chance. Rods without guides, reels with sophisticated clutches. I enjoyed introducing them to this new experience. Here we go, Norm. We got that? Get in there, Don. Come on, Don. Get him, Don. There we go, King Salmon. That happens to be on good line with a good knot, good snap swivels. There he goes again. And then as that fish gets up here to the boat, what we want you to do is step over towards the middle and keep the rod down low to the gunnel okay. of the boat. That'll keep the fish from being pulled out of the water and getting pulled off. Okay. What about pumping the rod, Bill? Is that not... We got uh, lever drag reels by Shimano here and they're very, very smooth, so we don't really have to pump on them. If you got a drag that's sticky or something, then you may have to pump the fish in. Occasionally we'll have the guy pump it, but not kind of salmon like this, you won't have to do that. See how the fish is coming up to the surface there? But you can see your line coming up out of the water there? Yep. Okay, now it's time to slide over towards the middle of the boat a little bit. There you go, you see your fish on the surface back there? Not yet. The slider's on here. There he's running at you. See, you see him running right at oh, you? Yeah. See your fish there? Yep. Real. Yep. Real like Real man. Keep Real up like man. There you go. Okay. There you go. Now see how he's coming right at yep. you? Yep. Keep it tight. There you go. See that fish is just swimming there, relaxing. Yep. Yep. These salmon you have to be kind of aggressive with. The, okay. the lake trout are passive, you know, yeah, you want to be I, slow and easy, but these you got to keep, see how he's running all over? He's actually yeah, running ahead of yeah, the... Yeah, dodge. Yeah. He is. Coming right at us now. Yeah. What we want you to do is stay down, okay? Take one step back to the middle of the boat. There you go, right in there. How are you doing? You're a little tangled, so we're going to have to... This trick here. Just back up. Back up. <laughs> Got it. Got we, got it. we got tangled in our extra lure up here. Nice salmon. 
Oh, it is the a grill? nice one. The grill, yeah, that looks good on the grill. All right. All right. Now that is that your Thank first you, that's your first salmon trolling. You correct. Huh? That's right. Well let's get the, the scoop very here. first one. You just saw the dean of Cooley Law School reel in a salmon. But the, the, the little known secret is he's fished steelhead for many years. For many years, yep. This is my first uh, this is a Chinook. That's a king salmon, Chinook salmon. Yeah, that's my first one of those. Real. A lot more active than lake trout. Lake trout's the only other oh, kind yeah. of fish I've ever caught a lot. But I did move around a lot more. But you fished your steelhead when? Back in the 70s and early 80s? Yeah, well, late 60s and 70s. Then what A little happened? bit into the early 80s. Got old. No, oh, come on. Not me. No. <laughs> no. Uh, kids getting into school age and all my uh, fishing buddies got uh, uh, old and retired and it was hard to get a group together and the social part was gone, so that was part of it. Part of it was the kids getting into high school activities and that kind of thing, going to the games. But now your kids are in their 20s. Those excuses yeah. are gone. Yeah, they are. You got a cush job. Yeah, true. You got time, and, and you know you have enough income that you can afford to do this. But so why haven't you been? Well, it's a full-time job just taking care of people like you, Fred. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I had you. I you know I had you on my hands for the last three years. <laughs> it was tough. It was tough. I had to work extra hard to get you through law school. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I appreciate it. You well, did you well. Should, you did you well. should. And yeah. I, you know, meet your dad here, and uh, now I understand uh, that I'm not alone carrying this burden. <laughs> what are you laughing for? Oh, Thank you guys. I just, I just, huh? No, I thought laughing. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> carrying no. the burden. That no. seemed to strike a note. Yeah, that did. That did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Anyway, uh, Don, you did a good job there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Now that was a lot of coaches. A lot of coaches around here. It's pretty hard to <laughs> go too wrong. Everybody giving you instructions. Right. You noticed that. Making a throwing in an extra line made it a little harder. But <laughs> what was that? That was a uh, well, that was coho, good. king salmon. King salmon. The majority of our catch have been kings or chinook. That there, that particular fish is a, what we call a three-year-old king. In other words, it would live another year here in the lake. We can tell by the size and the way the scales come off and stuff. And then. The majority of our catch is that right now, with a few lake trout mixed in there. Some days more lake trout, and then occasional coho. Yeah. Maybe one or two coho. You know, if we get three or four, is a big day in the coho. But we have been catching coho almost every day consistently. Are they? Are the fish mixed up? Uh, as far as a, uh, a school of fish, they'll be mixed up, or will they be pretty much segregated? All kings the and fish, all. No, the fish school for the same reasons. The bait. Food, bait fish are there. Yeah. They basically like the same temperature, water temperatures, any from the low 40s to the mid, mid to high 50s is where those fish will be. And they're all there for the same reason, to eat the alewife. That's where the, what we'll do is we'll find a severe, we'll go down. You asked me the temperature, it was 76 degrees on the surface, okay? Yeah. It's 42 degrees, 110 foot down right here. In between there, there's a severe temperature break uh, at, at about 70 feet. It goes from in the high 60s to the mid 50s. From that level down are where the salmon and trout are right now because that's where the bait fish are. The zooplankton and stuff all builds up on that severe temperature break. Mm -hmm. And that causes the bait fish to come there. And of course the big fish come after them. And we go mm -hmm. after the big fish. So yeah. that's why we're fishing deeper. You know, this water you can see has got a lot of plant life, you know, a lot of a lot of plankton, a lot of stuff in it just because of the color of it, you know, it's, it's real green. It looks like you're almost like you're in the Bahamas, you know. Yeah. You know, ocean water right now. So we get right. the water's beautiful. Now, now one thing we do in the in the business is put your arms out. <laughs> to make the fish look bigger. Yeah, sure, yeah, well, you know that. To that though. You want to put your fingers back underneath the fish. Uh, slide your fingers back yeah. underneath the okay. fish. Uh, back well, underneath. Not, yeah. No. We back underneath. Oh, you I don't see. want your oh. fingers out in front. Oh, I see. Oh, so pull that fish out away from you. Try to make it look bigger. bigger. I see. You got your fingers up there. Looks like you got the hands with fingers that long. Ah. Show you a little trick. Oh, I didn't even know that. I'm just too modest for this business. Yeah. Hold her out there. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. Oh, look how pretty the green is on it. Tell you the thing is, this size though, it's great eating. Yeah. That's great eating. See, they got the. Your steelhead have white mouth. Uh -huh. Salmon all have black mouth. Okay, that's a good lesson. So that, that's how you can tell the, the king and the uh, coho salmon have a black mouth, and all the trout have white mouths. White gums. Uh -huh. Anything else? Any other? See how he's spotted on the tail, and his tail semi veed here. Yep. Okay, that's more of a salmon. A coho wouldn't have the extensive spots on the tail uh -huh. like that. It'd have a white mouth. What about the steelhead tail? The steelhead would be more straight square across blunt, yeah. Instead of being semi veed like yeah. this. And it'll have lots of spots on that. Yeah. Well that's a nice color in this. Yeah. 
up here on the top. You can see the, in the sunlight, the iridescence. Great eating too. Yeah, they're kind of slimy. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Thanks, Red. Let's, right here, let's get him back in here this before you guys on the ice. Yeah. On the ice. Like that. Well, seeing Don LaDuke, my dean at Cooley, catch his first salmon was a lot of fun for me. Maybe I enjoyed it more than he did because it was such a new experience for him on the Great Lakes. Well, then I got to watch my dad tussle with a big fish. Now, this was the guy who introduced me to the joys of hunting and fishing. It's nice and steady on the reel. How's it deal? No, you don't have to worry about the, uh, having the guides. Turn on this one, on this no. One. We're so poor we can't afford to have guides on these rods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, these are the new experimental ones we were telling you about. No guides on them, so you get a nice true arc. You get a good feeling for the fish with them, too. These reels are very fast. You notice how if you turn the handle slower, that you're gaining line better on him than when you're turning it real fast. Yeah, well, well, and the reason being is when you slipping. turn it fast, is you actually slip the clutch. Yeah, you slip in the clutch, right. Good news is you only got another 88 yeah, meters. Not, you know, oh, those are meters? <laughs> Seriously, that's yeah, meters? Yeah, yeah, that one's in meters. Oh, so that's... That was 115 meters out. Yeah. Wow, that's 345 feet. More than that, meters. Yeah, that's more than a football field. Just got to take your time. Young guy like you, you know, you yeah. can't just rush into it. You got to just right. nice and easy and enjoy the fight. See how you're gaining them? So just slow but sure. You know, if you yeah. pull up on him and you're in the middle of the pole at 10 foot of leverage and he thrashes down, when the fish is thrashing you feel that pumping on the rod, uh -huh. he's actually laying in the water with his mouth open, head going back and forth trying to get rid of that hook. Yeah. So you're pulling up at the same time he's doing that, you're actually helping him. Yeah. And by just a nice steady reel and keeping the rod bent like that, you know, it doesn't allow him to tear off as quick, especially yeah. with a trout with a little more soft mouth than what the salmon are. So we were telling Don there when it was a Samuel, you can be a little more aggressive with them. Uh -huh. And the trout, you have to be able to use a little more finesse and take it a little easier with them. So you're you're betting that this is a lake trout. <clears throat> are you a betting man, are you, Dad? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I won't bet against you. You won't? No, no, no. no. So say, I got a dime in my pocket here, I'd be willing to bet <laughs> no, you. No, no, I mean, yeah, I'm sure you're right. Got a nice shiny one here. Yeah. <laughs> Could be yours. <laughs> well, I'll just, uh, I'll take that dime You're bet. You're going to take that dime bet? <laughs> yeah, I'll take that dime bet. There, there you go. go. <laughs> See, that's not really gambling. That's just good, clean fun. That's right. <laughs> you never fished with a rod like this with a line going up through the middle, have you? No, never have. Now, in fact, I've never seen one before. Fish with, fish with no uh, dice on bamboo pole. Yeah. Can, can you tell any difference? What? No. No, except, I don't know. Uh, no, I can't tell any difference. But go. Just keep a nice steady reel on it. I'm going to get the net up Step here. Back just a little bit, Dad. Oops. There you go. Stay right here with me, buddy. Here we go. You're not going to swing him aboard, are you? Keep your rod down, Dad. Keep your rod down. There you go. Now just look towards the front of the bow. Left, left. Hey, that's right. a dandy. That's a good one. Yes, yeah, indeed. Huh? Just hang right on, man. Let me pull a little line out. There. You know what that cost you? Uh, yeah, it cost me a dime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Why don't you hold him up, Paul? Okay. You want to get your hands dirty or you want me to hold him up? No, I got him. Got him? Oh, yeah. There you yeah, go. you see, I was on, on Don's fish, it was a black mouth, a black oh, mouth of the salmon. That's white. Yeah. White of the trout? Yeah. There yeah, you he's go. kind of marbled looking. Yeah, he is kind of, he is marbled. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. neat. He gave you quite That's a right. fight. Well, yeah, he did. I'll have to say that. <laughs> yeah. Good okay. Job. We put him in here. In the, the cooler. There you go. Now Don's fish isn't so lovely in there. There we go. Oh, he's a little bit bigger. Well, both of my boys now had fish. Frankly, it had taken several hours of trolling in the early afternoon, but by 6 p.m., the wind died down. The water was flat, but the fishing pace picked up. <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah. Hey. All right. Hey, All how right. about that? There. Yeah. That's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> That's a fish. <laughs> that is. All right. Well, thank you for that one. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
the dean of the college here. Now we're darn proud of this fish. Yeah, absolutely. Well, now the dean is showing more sparkle. His enthusiasm for Great Lakes trolling is growing, but, you know, it isn't just catching trophy fish that we're after. Nor do we need to catch lots of fish to have a good day. Now, it just so happened that my two boys did catch lots of fish, but the outdoors is sort of a family thing. Bill Bale is like Uncle Bill to Dave Engel's two sons who met us on the dock. Now, even though we're not all related by blood, there is a kinship that develops when people fish together. Now, I've had a kinship with these two guys over the years, and I really enjoyed having us together. When I said we became brothers in the boat, you can see what happened when Don got a fish on. My dad wanted to be a part of Don's accomplishment by netting his fish. Now, netting is a critical time in landing a fish, and my dad almost knocked the fish off. Whoa! The close call made the landing that much sweeter. You want to know what camaraderie is in fishing? Just listen. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier to have the fish for you. On the, same yeah, side side the family is pulling together like a team. My dad now has a fish on, and Don grabs the net. Now the two of them team up to land another fish. What teamwork? What teamwork? Oh, yeah. That was a good job on that. Yeah, this was not my day to catch fish. It was my day to bring a new experience to two very significant people in my life. The excitement was electrifying. And my dad learned that grabbing a rod isn't that easy. Uh oh, out, out, out. Oh, oh. Fishing memories are sweeter when you fish with people you appreciate, like my dad. The gleam in his eye is a picture I want to remember. There you go. Fish, fun, and family values. The picture of a perfect day. Chances are for Father's Day, your dad would, would, I mean, you know, ties and watches and stuff like that, things, they're okay to give as gifts. Nothing wrong with that at all. But why not give your father a trip or your grandfather or somebody's father, your uncle? You know, take, take dad, whoever is the dad in your life, fishing. I mean, a fishing trip would be something that you could all enjoy together. I mean, you could even take more of the family out and make it a family outing. But I'm sure that that's something that is really unique. Uh, you can book a fishing trip, a charter trip. Uh, you don't have to take them out yourself. Make a treat of it. You know, instead of going out to dinner, take dad fishing. I think that's a great idea. Anyway, here's our guide report around the state. There is some good fishing up here in the Keweenaw. They're getting some king salmon, some lake trout limits, nice eating size, and some good inland fishing, according to Paul at Dick's Favorite Sports. Bayshore says things have gone bum here because of the cold front. They got mayflies and alewives. We've had a die off even of alewives uh, in the Great Lakes. It's been something else. Walleye are hit and miss in the Marquette area with fair brook trout fishing. Over in Minuskong, you're getting a few pike in the shipping channel in the St. Mary's, uh, but the walleye is slow. We have mayflies. Drummond Island. Fair herring fishing already, and the walleye are fair in Maxton Bay. Indian River, slow because of our old friends, the <laughs> wives and mayflies. Uh, walleye have also been slow in Burt and Mullet Lake. Uh, bucks here, Rockport, walleye limits at Long Lake. Perch are good up to 14 inches at the south end of Long Lake. Grand Traverse, uh, lake trout, they're getting a couple, and king salmon are good down at Manistee. Cadillac, some excellent bluegill fishing because they're starting to bed right now. It's about time. Um, over here at Wellman's, Oscoda, salmon and lake trout, they're getting six to eight per boat out in the deeper water and they're getting some walleye still uh, at the Osable River fishing from boats. Linwood, it's been fair, been getting uh, some walleye and pike and bass have been just great in the shallows and they should be at this time of year. Lexington, fair salmon fishing, walleye limits drifting in the St. Clair River. Uh, Lake St. Clair walleye have been spotty, eater size, 14 to 15 feet of water. Silver bass are still excellent. The longest run they've had in five years, according to Frank at Trenton Lighthouse. Over here, Captain Nichols at South Haven says we're picking up uh, some perch before the front. They were starting to hit better. 
That's, that's good news. A Saugatuck, seven per trip out in deeper water. A Whitehall, Kings Coho and Steelhead have been good. Pike and Walleye have been slow because of too many alewives. I mean, they're floating over here. Um, up at Ludington, though, they're really popping. King Salmon, 9 to 15 per boat. Lake Trout, excellent. Perch, 25 to 30. Take a look at the fly hatch report here from Baldwin Bait and Tackle. Brown Drake, Sulphurs, Light K Hills. The hex hatch slowed things down because of the cold front, and they're starting to use terrestrials now. Lots of hoppers along the shore. Now for our trophy tale, let's go to Nuego County. George Iggy from Grand Rapids caught a largemouth bass that, uh, man, that's a big one in anybody's book. Six pounds, 11 ounces, almost pushing seven. You got this at, towards the end of June on a soft craw. Yep, soft craw. So you like fishing with the crawdads? Yeah, they work pretty good. How do you hook them? Oh, you mean like rig them? Yeah. Texas rig. Okay, well, it sounds like you know what you're doing with in, in bass fishing. Mm-hmm. How long have you been fishing bass? Uh, four years. Yeah, and you're how old? Fifteen. So fishing since you're eleven. What, do you watch all the bass shows in that? Yeah. Okay, now, you, you kiss them like Jimmy Houston or what? No. You Did know? once. Once. <laughs> <laughs> and what brought that on? Um, it was just a really big bass and I felt I had to kiss it. I see. <laughs> so you released the bass that you catch? Yep. And you gave it a kiss and sent it on its way, but this one wasn't worth a kiss? No, I didn't think about it then. <laughs> Since you've gotten older, huh? Yeah. And you catch big bass every year? Is that uh, what you go for, or do you go for a lot of bass, or what? I go for a lot of bass. And what's the trick to catching a lot of them? It really isn't a trick, just go out and fish. But, you know, a lot of the, the tournament fishermen fish with artificial baits so they can release them. If you're using soft crop, don't they tend to swallow it or not? Um... Not really. I haven't had too many fish swallow my soft plastic baits. Oh, you mean soft craw. You're not talking about an actual crawdad. No, um, a soft plastic crawdad. Ah, oh, the plastic. Okay. So how do you fish it? On the bottom, in the weeds? Or? Yeah, in the weeds. Hmm. You sound like you know what you're doing. What are you going to catch this year? Hopefully a bigger bass. Bigger one. Well, good man. You going to kiss it? Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Congratulations. George Iggy from Grand Rapids. The Outdoor Fair is coming up on July 17th and 18th, which, by the way, is the best time of the year weather-wise for events. Rarely does it rain at the fair, and when it does, it's just a brief shower. And we do have sunshine ordered this year. One of the big attractions at our Outdoor Fair is the shooting show. Firearms have been in the news big time the past few months. Guns are stirring up more controversy than ever. Guns are a big part of the Outdoor Fair but we present guns in an educational way. Harry Reinfelder demonstrates shooting tricks, which are always fun to watch, but we also demonstrate what guns can do, what they cannot do, which is a far cry from what you see in the movies. The shooting shows will also cover self-protection, safety locks, and some of the laws that apply to guns in Michigan. Besides the shooting shows, there's lots to do and see at the fair for sportsmen and their families. That's July 17th and 18th at the Livingston Conservation and Sports Association in Brighton. Next week, I'll give you more of a rundown of what's going on at this summer's outdoor fair. One new addition to the fair will be similar to the addition that we have here at the museum. Now, that addition is reflected in the new sign on the top of the museum. It's not just practical sportsmen anymore. It's the Marbles Museum of Outdoor Collectibles. In a few weeks, we'll start setting up collections here of a variety of outdoor equipment. Also, the gift shop is now a Marbles factory store with a complete line of Marvel's products. Now this is a change that we hope will help ensure the future of this TV show. By the way, if you have a collection of outdoor equipment or memorabilia artifacts that you'd like to display at the outdoor fair, Marbles is providing free booth space and a special tent that will be for people to display their collections of outdoor equipment or memorabilia. Collecting is a growing activity, even among hunters and fishermen, and we want to show people how to get into sporting collectibles and display them. We want to do this at the outdoor fair. Give us a call if you have a collection that you'd like to display. We'll give you free booth space and a free practical sportsman membership. Also, make sure you get outdoors this weekend. And by the way, make plans to take your dad fishing too. See you next week. 
Just like the national outdoor magazines have changed, our magazine has been challenged by an evolving outdoor market. After some changes in the past year, we're settling into a format that focuses on the Practical Sportsman TV show with information about some of our popular TV features, as well as news and commentary and outdoor collectibles. We'll also have details on how you can become an individual Practical Sportsman sponsor and get special benefits and inside information about the show. Now, Fred Trost Practical Sportsman is brought to you in part by Marbles of Gladstone, Michigan, a maker of high-quality handcrafted sporting knives and sporting specialties that stand the test of time since 1898, and by the financial support of viewers like you. You asked me the temperature, it was 76 degrees on the surface, okay? Yeah. It's 42 degrees, 110 foot down right here. In between there, there's a severe temperature break uh, at, at about 70 feet. It goes from in the high 60s to the mid 50s. From that level down are where the salmon and trout are right now because that's where the bait fish are. The zooplankton and stuff all builds up on that severe temperature break. Mm -hmm. And that causes the bait fish to come there. And of course the big fish come after them. And we go after the big fish. So yeah. that's why we're fishing deeper. You know, this water you can see has got a lot of plant life, you know, a lot of, a lot of plankton, a lot of stuff in it. Just